phone with us. Uh, Austin, thank you so much for being with us, sir. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me, sir. Yes, sir. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and tell our, our audience uh, that doesn't live in, in northwest Arkansas where District 95 is. Sure, no problem. I mean, it is northwest Arkansas. It is Bella Vista, parts of Rogers, parts of Bentonville, and all of P Ridge. So it kind of cuts in and out of different areas in different towns up here in northwest Arkansas. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you. Um so uh, you, this was your freshman session. I'm sure you're glad it to was. get that out of the out of the way. Hey, but feel free to <laughs> take as long or take as as short as you want, and just kind of generally summarize what was your impression of the 2017 session. Okay, sure. Uh, I'll say that I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun getting to know other leaders and other legislators from across the state. Um, I think we did some good. I think we we did some good in legislation. And I think we also did some good in maybe what we didn't do. Um, it was very interesting to see see the way policy came together in a number of different ways. Um, you know, some of it I was a fan of. Maybe some of it not so much. Certainly a learning experience. Um, probably the best example that I can give you on um, I, I liked part of the policy, but maybe I didn't like how it was done. Um, we can talk about the veterans tax cut. So we exempted military retirement pay from um, income taxes um, for those that weren't following that story. I think that's a good thing. I think that's great um, for a number of reasons that you know you probably heard other people talk about. Um, so what I mean by maybe the way that it was done is perhaps some of the other things that were sprinkled into that bill, uh, which I did not appreciate. So you just heard me say, I, I think it's great that we're exempting military retirement pay, but I, I don't really have a problem saying publicly that I actually did not vote for it. Um, perfect example, we taxed digital downloads in that same bill. I hate that. I couldn't support that, so I voted against it. So that's just, you know, an example of... Uh, of policy that that we brought forth that that I liked, in, in, in part of what came with the veterans tax cut, but the way we did it uh, right there, I wasn't a fan of. Yeah, that's interesting that you you mentioned it. I, I, you know, that was an awkward position right off of the bat. That I feel like a lot of sure. your colleagues agreed with you on that. And, you know, some of them they went ahead and voted for it, but I mean, you you voted against it because uh, the 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 policy that you agree with that you were being asked to support, but you also had a policy in there of tax increase. It wasn't just the digital downloads, but they were you know they they were raising taxes other places in that bill as well, if memory serves correct. Sure. Yeah, that's. That's correct. Um, if I can remember, it ensured that candy and soft drinks were subject to the to the full state sales tax rate, and they're currently they're charged at the same reduced rate as groceries. I wasn't as opposed to that as I was um, the digital download part. You know, I, I read through this thing and I saw uh, a part an exemption created for public schools for public textbooks, textbooks used for public schools, and. Um, you know, that's a good thing. I'm glad we're exempting that. But, you know, immediately I thought, well, what about private schools? Or what are we saying? If you go to a private school, you don't deserve to be taxed, or you deserve to be taxed more if you go to a private school when you buy your books? Or what about just all other books or all other e-books? Are we, are we taxing all other types of reading and learning just because it's done via a download? So those types of things and, you know, some some other legislators that actually had the same veterans tax cut bill that was that was introduced and um it just seemed like we were so anxious to, to pass that yeah bill and i wasn't particularly yeah. a fan of that yeah and, and i know there was you know other they had a clean bill that just did you know because a lot of people thought the idea that uh, military retirees living here they're it's going to actually pay for itself easily if not you know bring in more mm -hmm. revenue for the jobs that they'll create with you starting businesses and that sort of thing um and I, I would tend to agree with it. Sure. The, the problem is there just seemed to be, um, on this particular issue, no willingness on part of the leadership to accept any solution that required the, the uh, you know, the cuts. You know, we're, we're only talking $13 million, I think, uh, for the veterans. And we, we, we were told, well, we can't cut 
the size of government here or there to pay for this. We have to uh, balance it out by getting more revenue somewhere else. That kind of seems to be the philosophy there. We, we don't really want to shrink the size of government. What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I, I did see some of that. I will say early on the conversation was let's hold up on a lot of the conversations regarding taxes because we want to create this task task force and um, it, it, it was just interesting to me that some of the same folks that were saying hold up on anything regarding tax cuts because of the task force were often some of the ones pushing for and <laughs> offering up tax increases. Now, with, with that being said, I, I am actually optimistic for the task force. Um, the report is supposed to have proposals for tax cuts and job growth. That's the way it reads. And I'm not really sure what the latter means as far as job growth, but I am a fan for tax cuts, so therefore I can't help but be optimistic, <laughs> regard, regardless of what we've seen in the past. And I know um, a lot of people have uh, certain opinions, strong opinions about task force. I am one of those. In fact, I, I, uh, I, I'm not going to say every time. A lot of times when I saw a task force, I, I voted against it. But, I mean, here's why I'm optimistic about this. This is actually a huge. You asked about my impressions of the the first session. Currently, it seems to me it's like a giant bloodbath here for whoever can compete for the best exemptions for their interest group, mm. as opposed to policy that serves the public as a whole. So what we're saying is, because it's such a giant bloodbath, let's set time in a specific group that's just going to focus on. Hopefully, right, getting rid of all these classes of tax exemptions here and there for different groups so that we can broaden the base and then let's aggressively and responsibly, hopefully, lower income taxes for everyone. And that sounds like a great idea to me, um, but I, I think the reason I brought that up originally, I, I was just saying that some folks that were saying hold up on any type of tax conversation – because we have the task force, we're also saying, well, I'm going to offer up this tax increase here and this tax increase there. Yeah. So I wanted I wanted to be consistent if that if that's what we're saying we're going to do to help out our Kansans. Hmm. Uh, we're talking with State Representative Austin McCullum from District 95 on, on that uh, the task force because I, I I really hope that that it is great and I hope we get some real conservative solutions. But I I my fear is. Uh, just specifically, like without just generally not trusting task forces, which I have to admit that I do. Um, but just on this specific issue, you know, if the mentality is that we've got to find a way to, quote, cut taxes, but we will not address the idea that the government may not necessarily need the same level of revenue it has now, it, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Then, then really it, what we may just be doing is uh, – you know, kind of just moving funds around and just be a shell game. That's my concern. Yeah, and that's a fair concern. And uh, I, I mean, it's a concern for me as well, considering some of the stuff that I just watched happen. And I mean, I can't say I watched it happen. I, I am a part of it now, right? I have to be a team player and come up with solutions. Um, but while it is con- a concern, the way it's being talked about is, Specifically, let's look at all of those exemptions. Let's look at wherever those groups are that are maybe benefiting more than others. And let's think about how to get rid of those exemptions and broaden the base. Yes, I hear you. It is a concern. We do need to think about cutting spending as well. That's got to be part of it. Um, I hope to be one, and I know there are others that will be advocating for also cutting spending. Um, I, I mean, I... I've been told by folks, well, you, you can't cut taxes unless you're willing to say where you're going to cut spending. Um, I kind of have the philosophy of, well, don't raise any tax unless you tell me, tell me directly how you're going to cut taxes somewhere else So, or with income taxes. It's a fair concern, but if this is going to work, you're right. We have to be intentional about not shifting things around. We have to think about cutting spending, too. Um, I think it's realistic to expect cuts in spending. 
I mean, we, we, we heard uh, literally our, our uh, representative, Gene, when he was talking about the budget, specifically at the well, say we, we can't continue with this budget it's not without – it's not sustainable um, without raising taxes. So right then and there, you know, like you have someone who pays attention to this, to all the details, and they're saying you have to raise taxes as well. We could also figure out ways to sh- stretch the budget in different areas or cut spending. And I do believe there are those that will be on that task force that will be advocating for that. Yeah, and I, I really, I certainly hope so. Um, so, the next next question on this, let's let's talk about this the 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 quest for more revenue from the taxpayers. That that seemed to be whether we call it a fee or whether we call it a tax or whether we say you know, you already owe this, whatever it is, I've got a graph I'm looking at, and it says that in the yeah. Arkansas 91st General Assembly, there were uh, uh, $380 million uh, a year of either proposed or past tax increases. So you got like the tire taxes, the digital products tax, which you already mentioned, the soda and candy tax. But then we get into the ones, uh-huh. the internet sales tax and the gas tax, which, yeah. I mean, those are $150 million, $217 million. Those are dead for now because we played defense on that, and I think that's a good thing. But then yeah. we've got in the paper, we've got quotes from you know folks saying, hey, we may try to bring this back up. What, what are your thoughts on all this quest for revenue this session? My thoughts on a quest for revenue – is, I mean, we kind of touched on earlier, why wouldn't we have a quest for cuts in spending first before we talk about a quest for revenue? I mean, I, I can't speak to what was proposed. I can only speak to what was passed. If anything, that's what I meant in the beginning by okay, uh, okay. we can measure success by, by what we didn't pass, right? So if it was proposed, and I mean, you brought it up, the um, SB 140, um, I think an alternative title for that is a regressive tax on Arkansas residents, the majority of which will be paid for by Arkansans under the age of 45. Uh, and what I mean by that, I mean, that, yes, everyone's buying online, but uh, it's obvious to see from a data standpoint, it's millennials that are spending dollars online. Yeah. Now, it's probably fair to say that all sales taxes are regressive, um, which probably brings me to my point of, I would probably even vote for it if I knew for a fact it was going to be reserved for income tax reduction. But, of course, that wasn't part of it. So, I mean, I, I can't speak to why uh, legislators uh, feel like they need to propose, uh, as you put it, the, the cost for the revenue here and there. But I, I was excited to see some of the votes that uh, those supposed tax increases or those quests for revenues yeah we voted against them what what about we're, we're, we are running out of time and i really appreciate it. we're talking with state representative austin mccollum uh, he his vote i mean i just want to say austin your voting record was spectacular um it really really it truly is um can you talk just a little bit about the process um i mean did you learn anything you know from the process maybe the process that we don't see um in the headlines but you guys do in in your deliberations Yeah, it's a good question, and thank you for being so kind and uh, making that comment about my voting record. That's very kind of you. Um, maybe it's the process that, that folks don't see. Uh, probably the people don't spend as much time paying attention to committee meetings and where a lot of these things are talked about and a lot of these issues are discussed. Um it, it seems to me that once an issue, once a bill reaches the floor, a lot of folks have made up their mind. So there are a lot of conversations probably that, that folks don't know about unless you're in the House that go on um, during the committee meetings. And I guess I should say what I'm talking about during committee meetings, maybe even during the same time but not at the table and questions, just side-to-side conversations or the discussions that are happening. I'm trying to think of how I can best answer your question. I, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, the committee process is, uh, I mean, it's really where, you know, bills go to live or die and, you know, so much of it. Did, did you did you find any, uh, you know, a lot of times 
you've got a bureaucrat telling you what a bill's going to do or you have a colleague telling you what a bill's going to do if you're not on that particular committee um how do you know who to trust down there as a freshman that's a fair question um I wouldn't say that I don't trust anyone. Maybe this just comes from my experience my outside of legislating, uh, being in the, the retail environment. And when people are saying, hey, they're, they're trying to sell you something, it's, you know, it's a trust but ver- verify type of deal. You, give, you get all this data, and it's not that they're lying. It's just you know, you know their biases, you know their prejudices, and you know that they're trying to give you data that's leading you down the path that they want you to go down. So it's your job as a legislator to, to recognize their perspective and think about all of the data, not just like the tunnel that they're pointing you down. You really, you really have to be careful um, as far as the trust issue. I think you just develop that over time. And uh, I, I was just, I just observed. I tried to listen a lot, and I, I tried to as much as I could notice what someone says. But I, I also know. Um, the the loudest indicator a lot of times of what someone will do is what they've done in the past so i i try to study up on how they've represented themselves in the past and some of the stuff they said in the past state representative austin mccullum we appreciate it sir thank you so much for uh giving us some time and uh i just i really again i appreciate the work that you did down there this session yeah thanks for everything you do and for speaking up for for liberty and being the liberty machine that you are appreciate right. you hey i appreciate it thanks austin uh folks we got to go to break uh it is uh johnny cash friday and good friday edition of that back in just a moment